thanks for picking up this flower in a pot kit. Perhaps this could be a gift for your mom or your grandma or your auntie. Let's find out how it all works. There's a whole lot of stuff included in the kit. We're gonna get started with step one, which means we need the flower pot, we need the glue, we need our paintbrush, and we need our tissue papers. So let's set the other stuff aside. Ooh, while we're doing that, we also wanna make sure we have something that we can work on to protect our table space. It could be a plastic tray like mine, maybe you use a cookie sheet wrapped in tin foil or a big trash bag, or maybe even one of those party plastic tablecloths, something to protect your table while you're working on your artwork. Step A for this particular flower pot project is going to be tearing up some of your tissue papers. You don't have to use all the colors. If you're not a particular fan of one of these colors, you don't have to use it for this project. Maybe you could save it for something else. I decided to work with the warm color choices, which is gonna be the reds, the pinks, the oranges, the yellows. These are colors that remind us of summertime and the sunshine and being all sorts of warm. You might have chosen the cool colors for your kit, which are gonna be the greens and the blues and the purples. These colors remind us of winter time and staying nice and cold. So for this step, I like to have a little bowl or a tray to hold my papers. And you can cut the tissue paper if you want to, but I think it's more fun to rip it. We want these pieces to be into smaller kind of puzzle pieces. You don't want them to be too big and you also don't want them to be too tiny. So I'm just gonna have lots of options. Maybe I'm done with the yellow and I wanna start with a new color. And I'm just gonna get a variety of shapes and even sizes. You can even make them like longer strips if you want to. I ripped up about the amount that I think I might need. You might end up needing to rip a few more once you get your flower pot going, but for now this looks like a pretty good amount. I still have some pages left over just in case I need more or I can totally use these for other projects. I've got my glue open, my paintbrush, and even a little towel just in case my fingers get a little bit messy. Make sure it's a rag that's okay to get messy. My flower pot has a bit of a foam piece in there. That's gonna be handy once we have our flowers built, we'll be able to get our flowers into that foam. But we don't need to worry about that too much when we're decorating the outside of our flower pot. So the idea is to cover part of this flower pot with the glue. Now, even though your glue is white, it will dry clear. And I'm going to work kind of one section at a time. That way my hands kind of have a space to live while I hold the flower pot. Now that the flower pot has glue on it, these paper pieces are gonna stick oh so nicely on top. I might even want to put a layer of glue on top of the paper that I just put down. This will make it easier for when I layer another color on top of it. It's kind of like building a sandwich and we're layering all of our pieces together with glue as our base or like our bread, I guess, bread of a sandwich. And then we're putting like our toppings on. So maybe, I don't know, a piece of cheese, maybe it is, peanut butter and jelly, but we're layering up our paper and layering our glue on top because the glue helps stick these pages to our flower pot. Now let's say my page kind of goes off the edge. It's totally okay to come to the inside of your flower pot and have this kind of fold over. I'm even using my brush to help squish down the paper. If it gets a little bit lumpy and bumpy, that's okay. It kind of makes a really cool texture, I think. I'm going to keep going 
and building my layers. If my hands start to get sticky, that's okay. I have a little towel nearby. The idea is to cover the whole flower pot with like a collage of color, a collage of different papers and different sizes and in different shapes. Everywhere you stick down a piece of paper, you want to make sure you have glue in the front and the back of the paper. And it's totally awesome to layer it up. I actually really like the way that the colors change when you've layered up a few pieces together. So like where the yellow meets up with this maroon color, or the yellow meets up with the pink and makes a really cool looking orange. It also makes for some really fun puzzle piece shapes. They're all going to be unique and different. When you're moving your fingers on top of the paper, one, you could just take a break from right now and let the glue dry, or just be really gentle when you're holding where the glue is so that the paper doesn't get stuck to your fingers. And don't be afraid to use a lot of glue. This just helps stick our page to our flower pot. I'm trying to flatten down the paper so that there are no air bubbles underneath. Take your time with this and be patient with the papers. I think I've got all of the pieces that I want on my flower pot. I covered up all of the white area on the flower pot. I even covered up some of the areas on the inside. I might even put a little bit more in here. You get to decide, do you wanna put more papers in here? Do you wanna put more pages on the outside? You could even tear up littler pieces to put on top. That's totally up to you. Now my fingers are pretty well stuck on here, on the bottom and on the top, and you'll wanna make sure you have um, a slick surface that you're working on. So maybe even like a zip top bag that you could rest it on, that way it doesn't get stuck on like paper or newspaper. And I'm just gonna let this sit and dry, and it might take a few hours for it to dry, which is totally okay because I've got another step to this project. I almost forgot. Our kit has some glitter in it. And while our pot is wet, we're gonna wanna sprinkle some of that glitter onto our pot. Again, I'm working on a surface that can get messy and even collect the extra glitter when I'm all done. You can sprinkle it on, which I may suggest be the best way to do it. Fingers are gonna get a little messy. Or even a little sticky, that's totally okay. Just make sure you've got your glue on there so that your glitter can stick. And if some of your paper comes a little bit undone, make sure you help flatten that back out. Woo, all sorts of glitter. Time to wash my hands. Your paintbrush has all sorts of glue on it. We're gonna wanna make sure we clean that very, very well in the sink. Make sure you get permission to clean it by yourself, but you want to press it down on the bottom of the sink with the running water, or even just rubbing it in your, like in the palm of your hand. That helps the glue come undone from the brush. Sometimes I also soak my brush in some water and maybe let it soak for a few hours as long as your flower pot maybe takes to dry. That way your bris bristles don't get hard and crusty. We wanna make sure that you can use this brush over again. 
while we are waiting for our flower pot to dry, we can get started on building the parts of our flower. This coffee filter is gonna end up turning into the petals for our flower. We're going to need some water-based markers. These are markers that are usually described as washable. You might have some thinner markers at home. You might even have some of these fun smelly markers at home. We're gonna use those to decorate our coffee filter or our petals. First step is to fill up the page with some fun marks. Again, I wanna make sure I'm working on a surface that's protecting my table because these markers sometimes can ooze through the coffee filter. I can make stripe marks, I can make polka dots, but the idea is to cover a lot of our page with color. That way the flowers are filled with color. And if we use these smelly markers, they might even smell nice. That I've made my marks over almost all of the page. There is not much of the white coffee filter left. I've got a lot more color on here. I even have some doodles and designs. Mostly it doesn't matter what you put on here so long as you've got some really cool color. I'm going to want to fold this in half. Which makes like a nice taco. And I'm going to fold in the, it in half again. Now it makes a bit of a pizza slice. Now that I have my pizza slice, I'm ready to fill up a small jar with water. Maybe you have a baby food jar that you could use. Maybe you have just a small plastic cup or, you know, I like my recyclables. We want to put a little bit of water in the jar. Not too much, just enough so that our coffee filter can set inside. I wanna choose one, two, three parts for three pages. And I'm going to open it up so that it makes, ooh, I don't know, a party hat, an ice cream cone, and we're gonna set our ice cream cone into our jar. And I think you can already start to see the water starting to travel up the coffee filter. The coffee filter loves to soak up the water from the bottom. And when it's doing that, it's also pulling those marker colors up along with it. So whatever I have on the page is going to be totally transformed. Since this is going to take a while, I'm going to set this one aside and let it work its magic. And I'm gonna make another coffee filter. Another idea or another technique that you could do to make these colors blend together a bit is to use a spray bottle. If you happen to have a little spray bottle at home, you could try this technique. All you need is a piece of paper. This just kind of helps double up your artwork or give a print of what is on your coffee filter. Now I'm going to set this on top spray it with the spray bottle. Those colors are going to start oozing pretty much immediately. And I'm going to let this dry naturally. Which means I'm just going to set it aside. If I've got maybe a fan to put it under, that would work too. Maybe even moving and the tray it can help blend these colors a little bit, but we just want to let it sit and rest and do its magic. We'll be able to pick it up once it's all dry. 
now that most of the colors have oozed all over that coffee filter, except maybe just this last little bit, I'm gonna help it out. So I'm gonna take it out of the cup. I'm gonna let that last little bit of water drain out first. Move my cup out of the way and open this up. I'm gonna help this last little bit ooze by dipping my finger in the water, which has completely changed color, and helping ooze this last little bit. Again, I'm gonna just let this dry naturally, and when it's all dry, which actually should go fairly quickly, when it's all dry, we'll be able to go to the next step. While I'm waiting for the coffee filters to dry, I'm gonna practice my scissor skills or my cutting skills with scissors and this black piece of paper. This page has some stripes on it that I've marked with a pencil and we're going to wanna to follow those lines with the scissors and we're gonna stop when we get to that kind of line at the top that goes across. So we don't want any cutting happening in this area up at the top. It's gonna eventually make some really fun fringe. Last one. Yay! Next up, I took out these tiny, tiny beads and my sticks with that little bit of tape on them. And I'm going to add the beads to that green stick. You could turn it into a pattern, use your favorite colors. I think we wanna put on six different colors. That way we have a little bit at the end to give our stamen a bit of a bend. Now you might need some grown up help for this part. I'm just gonna bend the top so that these beads don't fall off. Two more to go. We're going to start building our flower onto our stem. This stick is like our stem today. And we're gonna need a bit of this green tape that it was attached to your bag. So I'm gonna peel a little bit up. You can rip it or you can use some scissors to cut it. I'm just getting prepared early so that I have a little bit of tape for when I am all done with this next step. I'm going to be wrapping this black fringe paper around the green part or the green tape that's on our stick. I'm going to slowly wrap this up. I'm just gonna keep going and I'm pinching and twisting and pinching and twisting so that this paper stays roughly in one spot. I want this bottom edge to all line up. And once I have this all twisted up, I'm gonna take out my little bit of tape to secure it in place. some of these fringe pieces back. This is kind of like the inside bits of the flower. Give them a little curl around my finger. Those will be a nice treasure to find inside your flower. This one's ready, two more to go. Time for the big reveal of the piece that was on the paper. The paper looks just as cool as the coffee filter. I can let this dry even more, cut it into pieces, make a card. You get to decide what to do with this secondary piece of artwork. Now that my coffee filter rounds are dry, it's time to cut them to look like petals. So we're gonna wanna cut one at a time and kind of go back to that shape that we did before. So like a taco, so folding in half to make a taco, folding in half again, so this end meets this end. This little kind of point meets that little point. 
So now I have my slice of pizza, but I'm gonna share this slice of pizza with a friend. So this time I'm gonna fold it in half again. And oh my goodness, another friend has visited, so I'm gonna fold this one in half again and share my slice of pizza. So now I have a very narrow triangle shape. And I'm going to decide what type of petal, since really this is not a slice of pizza. So now I need to think about what petal shape I wanna do. Do I want it to come to a point or do I want it to be round? I think for this one, I'll cut it to be a rounded petal shape. So I'm gonna take my scissors and trim off the top portion so it almost looks like an ice cream cone. So I have a nice shape at the top so that when I unfold it, there are petals there. I only had to cut it one time as opposed to all around the whole thing. This time I'm going to make a pointed petal shape. So I'm gonna start on the side and cut up to the top and then flip it over and then I'm gonna start at the side and cut towards the top so that I have a point, a pointed end as opposed to, remember we had that ice cream cone last time. So when I open this up, my petal shape is a little bit different. Awesome, I'm gonna keep doing that with all of my pieces. I forgot something. We want to cut the tiniest little hole at the bottom of our piece. This is going to put a tiny hole in our flower. Now it gets bigger than what you actually cut, so make sure you cut a tiniest little ever piece. We need to stack them up into groups of two. So you'll want to decide if you want to put colors that are similar together and you'll want to decide which one goes in the front and which one goes in the back. So you'll want to decide which ones you want to put where. And then we'll be stacking them onto our flower stem. We're going to put the bottom end through the holes that we cut and slide them through. And then as you can see, I'm kind of pinching and bundling them around that green piece of tape that's underneath. This is going to help our flower to bloom and look rather large and fluffy. Then we're going to take one of the pieces of tape that's on your plastic bag and we're gonna wrap it around the base of your flower. So we're gonna get some of the flower and I'm going to suggest some of the stem as well. So you're twisting and pinching and making sure that your flower base is nice and tight and squished. And I'm going around and do you see how my tape is actually twisting a little bit downward? helping to put a little bit of tape on the stem as well. This is going to help hold your flower into place. If you need some grown-up assistance for this, that's totally okay. All right, one flower is done. Time to make a couple more. Now that your flowers are done, we're going to need to plant them in our finished pot. So now that this pot is all dried, and the glitter is pretty well stuck on there, we're ready to find a nice spot to plant our flowers. Make sure you've got enough room for three. You get to decide where you want them to go. Because there's a wire, you can even move the flower so that it maybe even bends a little bit so that they aren't all crowded up at the top. Then once you have all your flowers planted where you like, we're gonna add some of this fun crinkly paper. This is going to be like our soil. So 
like we're planting our flowers in some colorful soil. I actually like when some of these dangle out of the edge. Now all that's left to do is to find a nice bag to put it in so that you can give it as a gift. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you had as much fun creating this as I did. I can't wait to see how yours turn out.